This equation in standard form. <laughs> yes. Good. Where? The back. On the back. On the back. Standard form. Does anyone remember how to graph from standard form? Did anybody forget how to graph from standard form? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're not alone, right? There's a whole bunch of people who forget. And you didn't? How do you graph this? So I'm going to show you a trick that if you ever forget how to graph, you can always use this trick. And this trick will work in here. It works in Algebra 2. It works every other math class you ever take. You can always use this trick. Okay? So if you ever forget how to graph a line, all you got to do is make an input-output table. Input-output table. So, huh? So you're gonna make a little table right here, x and y. What? Nope, on the back. Do you want a new one, Carson? So we're gonna make an input-output table on the back. So draw your input-output table. And then over to the side, I want you to draw a coordinate plane, either to the side or further down at the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but just get a coordinate plane. And then we need a little extra space to do some work. So what I can do is I can pick a few different points and I'm gonna pick x coordinates. So I'm going to pick a few different numbers to plug in for x, and that will show me what a few different points are on my line, which allows me to graph my line. So what I usually do is I usually pick a negative number. Actually, let me do this. A negative number and a positive number, and then I pick a third number. What do you think my third number is? I've got a negative number, a positive number, another negative, no, yeah, I've got a negative number, a positive number, and then what do you think I put in the middle? Zero. Zero. So I'm going to plug in a negative number in for x, and then I'm going to plug in zero for x, and then I'm going to plug in a positive number for x. So can somebody give me a number one through ten, and that'll be our negative number? Stop it. I like six. No, one through ten. Positive number one through ten. Great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative six and I'm going to plug it in for x. So I'll rewrite my equation down here. 3x plus 2y equals 12. But this time instead of x, I'm going to write bless you, negative six. And what does this mean? Like when I plug in a negative six for x, what do I do between the three and the negative six? Multiply. Exactly, multiply. So what's three times negative six? Negative 18 plus 2y equals 12. And now I want to solve for y. So how do I solve for y here? Yeah, I think you're thinking of distributive property, but we don't have any parentheses in here, so we don't need to do that. Does that make sense? So all I'm trying to do is get this y all by itself. So I need to get rid of the 2 and the negative 18. Exactly, yeah. Except for now, I don't have an x anymore. I just have numbers. 
and then these cancel out, right? So I've got 2y equals, what's 12 plus 18? Mm-hmm. So if 2y equals 30, how do I figure out what y is? Divide by 2, divide by 2. So what does y equal? y equals 15. Okay, so I just got my first point. Negative 6, 15. So on my coordinate plane now, I'm going to go over to negative 6. 3, 4, 5, 6, and then up to 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, and then I have my first point is right there. Negative 6, 15. We okay on that? Okay, let's do the next one. Let's plug in 0 this time. For, for x. Yeah, so I'm going to do this process over again, but instead of plugging in negative 6 like I did last time, I'm going to plug in 0. Okay? Can I erase this purple work? Yeah? No one needs it anymore? Okay, so this time. I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So I get 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 12. What's 3 times 0? 0. What's 0 plus 2y? 0 plus 2y. Yeah, it's just 2y. Good job. So 2y equals 12. How do I solve for y now, Karsten? Divide by what? Adriana, yes, you're right. No. So y equals 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So now I got a second point, 0, 6. So I don't go left or right at all because my x coordinate is 0. I just go up to 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Got a second point. Yeah? Makes sense? Okay, and now what do you think my last step is? What am I gonna, huh? What am I gonna do now? Yeah, I'm gonna plug in my five here. So I'm showing you this because sometimes it's really easy to like just forget the rules on how to graph something. You can forget every single rule on how to graph, but if you know how to use an input-output table, you can graph it. This saved my butt on so many like math classes in college because I just knew how to do this. So I could graph at any line I, I needed to. Sometimes negative slope. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it has a constant slope, so it is going to be negative. Um, what's 3 times 5? So I've got 15 plus 2y equals 12. What do I do next? Subtract 15. Subtract 15. Very good. You guys are getting so good at solving equations. 15 minus 15, that cancels. We've got 2y equals 12 minus 15. Mm -hmm. And then what's my final step, Karsten? How do you solve for y? How do you solve for y? How do you get that y all by itself? Shh. What do you what do you divide by? Yes. What's negative three halves as a decimal? Hey, Kurt Cabron. Mm -mm. Yeah, negative one point five. So now I've got my last and final point that I'm gonna put five negative one and a half. How does what work? <laughs> so five, that's over here. One, two, three, four, five. And then negative one and a half is just in between negative one and two, right? Yep. So right here, green. There we go. And look at that. We have a beautiful 
line that we just graphed. Even though we didn't remember how to graph from standard form, we were still able to graph it because we used our amazing input output tables. Okay, so remember that. Remember that. Tomorrow on your quiz, I'm going to give you an equation in standard form and you're going to need to graph it. This is one way you could do it. Can we do this? Yes. Yeah, you have a quiz tomorrow. It says it on the board. It said it all week. Yeah, no one's stupid. Of course, just. Be nice, you guys. You're a smart person. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to fill out the inside part of our little foldable. Yeah, good. That's my slope intercept, right? Wait, oh. X, no, X, X, X. Y, one, M, X, one. Yes, no, X, one. And what about the last one? I don't like that one. That one's um, Point slow? Uh, yeah, it's uh, stupid. Uh, <laughs> huh? No. What's this one? Standard form. A number something, a number something, and a number something. Yeah. A. A, 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 B, C. Oh, A, B, C. Good, good. Let's look at slope intercept. What does the M mean? Yes. What does B mean? Yes. Y intercept. What's this M? Yeah, it's the slope. And then what is x1, y1? Yeah, it's a point on the line. And then we don't really have the a, the b, the c. It doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. Although I will tell you this, slope is always negative a over b. I'll tell you that. Okay, negative a over b. And then over on the other side, so like you flip, you flip the flap, you know? And on the inside part, do you know what I'm saying? That's right. The white part. Yeah, the white part. Yeah, the part. So like you open up slope intercept form and you got this little white chunk of paper. We're gonna write something in there. Oh. So to graph, yes, but that's not what this isn't the change in X and this isn't the change in Y. Those are just two numbers. And look, if I have just really, really quick. If I have standard form and I solve it for y, I'm going to do minus ax, minus ax. So I have negative ax plus c equals by, and then I divide by b. Yeah, so y equals negative a over bx plus c over b. So this negative a over b is where I got that from. That's my slope. So to graph from slope intercept form, from slope intercept, what's my first step? I'm given an equation. How do I graph that line? Yes, you plot your y-intercept. And then what's your next step? So now you have a point on the line. What do you do next? Yeah, you figure out your slope and you use your slope. Your slope tells you, right, rise over run. And then you can draw the rest of your line that way. Right? So plot the y-intercept and then use the slope. And remember, slope is rise over run.
Okay, so that's how we graph from slope intercept form. But as we just learned, you can also always graph using an input output table. So you could use that as well. Okay, now point slope. How do I graph from point slope? It's also you two steps. Just take x, y, and y, or I mean x1 and y1. Yeah, so you plot x1, y1, whatever that point is. Yes, and Soraya, you're right. x1, y1 has like the opposite sign of what you see in the equation. Yeah, that's a good point. But yeah, we plot x1, y1, and then what would we do? So again, now I have, yeah, exactly, you use the slope, right? So I have a plot, a point that's x1, y1, and then whatever my slope is, you know, I use that slope to draw the rest of my line. Okay. And then last one, we have standard form. And I think we already established that nobody remembers how to graph from standard form. Is that right? Anyone remember? I'm gonna wait a second. Do you need to catch up? What time is it? Level two? Snowflakes get more. Okay, last one. Standard form. What we do to graph from standard form, again, you can use that input output table anytime. But the other way to graph from standard form is you find your x intercept and your y intercept. Doesn't matter which one you find first. Does anyone remember how do we find the x intercept? Uh, yeah, it's where the line, so the x-intercept, right, is this point right here. How do we find out what that point is, though? Y0? Yeah, you plug in 0 for y. That's really good. Plug in 0 for y, and then you'll solve for x. So whatever x equals. So when you plug in 0 for y, this term just goes away, right? Because it'd be whatever this number is times zero is just zero. So that goes away. So then you have ax equals c. And so now you just solve for x. How would you solve for x? Divide by a, right? Divide both sides by a. Okay, so then whatever that number is, that's your x-intercept. Solve for x. And then what else do you think we have to find? Yeah, find the y intercept. And how do you find the y intercept? Yeah, plug in zero for x, right? And that's to find this point, the y intercept. And then solve for y. And then that final step is just to connect your two points together.